The last application concerns uh, cooperative teleoperation in a completely different uh, domain, namely in space application. The situation is as follows. We have uh, two human operators which uh, command remotely two manipulators which should realize a task in a cooperative way. In the two figures that you see in this slide, which are taken from the DLR Institute in uh, Oberpfaffenhofen of uh, Mechatronic and Robotics uh, uh, of the German Aerospace Agency. On the left hand side, you see uh, a haptic into input device, which is constituted by two DLR, actually, KUKA uh, lightweight robots with seven degrees of freedom. Uh, which um, are used as uh, input devices. A human operator uh, sits on the chair, wears a head-mounted display, and uh, handles the two end effector uh, by moving them around, which are also force sensorized, uh, and this provides input to a remote um, B manual manipulator, in fact, the Space Justin mounted on the uh, International Space Station, uh, in order to execute some cooperative task with the two arms. Now, the only difference in this uh, setting is that it's a single operator that uh, controls both arms with the two input devices. But in fact, the idea behind this work uh, that inspired one of the um, short project of uh, uh, this module was to have uh, two independent um, human operator each driving its own uh, haptic interface and each moving one of the two arms remotely the two operators are not in the same place uh, they don't exchange information and should however um, complete in a efficient and successive a successful way this uh, remote task. So the idea that was developed in a paper uh, presented uh, by DLR researcher in, uh, at IGRA in 2016 and 2017 was to uh, augment the capability of a human operator by transferring the intention of the other operator without any other communication than transferring the force applied on the master by the other operator. So the idea is uh, not only uh, the master, so the human operator receives some feedback from the remote slave system, and this may include the uh, velocity, um, force, and combination thereof, but also the force that the other master is transferring to the same remote system. So in this force, there is the motion intention of the other operator. And the idea is that this will would achieve a better coordination and synchronization of motion than uh, nothing at all. So uh, the situation is the following. We have two slave, two master slave system uh, that with the slave cooperating uh, in, a, uh, in transferring or moving an object, a work object, and uh, the masters do not exchange other information than those coming back from the uh, remote manipulator and from the observed force measured by sensor mounted on the remote master. So, uh, in order to tackle this problem, one can downgrade this space application into a very simple system uh, for which we perform simulation, but also uh, with a, uh, a master, I mean a real master in the loop, although this master was just a uh, commercial joystick. So, we have a multi-robot that cooperate, in particular two robots. We consider the simple case of two planar robots, 2R, 
And the slave side, so the two slaves, uh, hold a stiff pipe, actually uh, a stiff object. So uh, the, the problem is moving this object around, both in position and orientation. So this is a three-dimensional planar task, in fact. And we have enough degrees of freedom for doing this. The problem is that we don't know how to coordinate this, uh, the activity of the two slaves if the two masters do not know uh, what the other is doing. Okay? So uh, we command the master with uh, uh, a joystick, here shown on the left. The left um, button is for the master one, the right bottom is for the master two, and there are also two vibration motors in this um, uh, game station, in a sense, uh, that will use to signalize the return of some feedback from the other operator. Uh, by the way, this uh, was tested also replacing the stiff object held by the two slaves by a flexible object and the results are pretty much the same. So you can see on the right hand side the definition of frame, the y direction is the one in which uh, the side direction, the z direction is the one in which we would like to move up and down the pipe object by coordinated motion of the two slaves. Uh, the commands uh, in the simulation and then in, in, the, in the demo uh, are directly given to the, uh, as force to the end effector of the two masters. You see F1H and F2H. H stands for human operator. So, uh, the solution for this cooperative uh, teleoperation was uh, proposed using the full four-way control architecture of teleoperation. So, in the communication channel there is a, an exchange in both direction of forces and velocity. So all four um, modules C1 to C4 in the communication channel are being used. Two in one way and two in the other way. And there are two such control architecture, one for each master-slave uh, situation. And this four control architecture are characterized by the forward channel which transfer uh, to the slave the human force applied by the operator and the master velocity or position or uh, both to the slave. And in the feedback channel uh, there is a force fed back from the environment, so it's the interaction force on the object being held by the two manipulators remotely and also the control force that is used for uh, controlling the slave and this is also fed back to the master. In addition to that, and so this is the standard replicated four-way control architecture replicated twice because we have two master-slave systems. So let's say master-slave one and master-slave two. So the addition, the proposal, was that uh, exchanging the motion intention in a haptic way, so through force exchange, from one user to the other, together with the reaction of the environment forces, would enhance the performance. Uh, in our um, toy system, these uh, forces are returned to the master device via vibration, so vibration on the uh, bottom related to operator 1 and on the bottom related to operator 2 on the uh, joystick platform. So, uh, in, the, in this two formula below, uh, the G112 one, one, and 2 and 2, 1 are simply gains or transfer function, but uh, the feedback on the uh, for controlling the master of the system one uh, is both coming from F1EZ which is the end effector force of the master slave side one 
uh, along the z-direction, which is the main in which the motion should be performed. And in addition, uh, the measurement of the force on the human operator side of the system 2 along the same direction. And in a symmetric and dual way, the additional feedback that uh, through which we control the master of system 2 is a combination of the exchange of force with the environment of the slave with the environment of system 2, G2 times F2E in the direction Z of the main motion, plus G21 F1 HZ, which is exactly the dual of the previous quantity, namely the force uh, applied in the Z direction by the human operator on the master of system 1. So this is a cross exchange which should help in a better performance. So what does it mean better performance? Let's see uh, first the video and then we will comment uh, the result and then also uh, show the uh, time plots of the various quantities. On the left hand side there is no augmentation. So the first uh, robot or better say, the first human operator, the master below, is pushing in the Z direction, so uh, in the top part, in the direction of the top of the slide, uh, the stick. The second operator remains still. There's no information, it's not doing anything. It doesn't know that something is going on on the other side. Okay, so uh, it doesn't contrast, the motion is performed in a certain way and this is the final result. You see that the slave and the master on the sides 2 remain still. Now with haptic augmentation this is what happened. You see when operator 1 applies the force on his master side and so moving the slave 1, this force is fo feed forward to the master 2, and so the operator 2 recognizes that this motion uh, intention and will follow the motion so that everything will move instantly. And you see that the cooperation has been realized only through this information. If we look at the uh, profile, these are quite hard to understand in the first place, but you can recognize on the left hand side the no augmentation case. In this case, the master one decided to uh, move in the z direction his slave. And in fact, the master and slave moves accordingly. And the master two and the slave two just have a, a minimum uh, interaction because of the uh, transportation through the rigid uh, pipe held by both manipulator of the slave uh, number two. Uh, in the third plot on the left hand side you can recognize between second three and second 3.5 the applied force by the first operator in green dashed line as felt by the second operator. And you see that there's a, a change, uh, a small change due only to the fact that the slave 2 is being uh, uh, pushed by the motion of slave 1. There's no other active motion. On the other hand, in the second plot on the left hand side, you can see that the uh, force uh, felt by operator 1 uh, has two peaks, is the red line, uh, because there is no collaboration on the other side. When we move to haptic augmentation, so we are informing the uh, second operator that the first one is doing something, and you can tell this by the last plot on the right hand side. It's very barely seen uh, around 0 
the dashed green line, which is the uh, force applied by the human operator one, and this is now reflected into a feedback coming to operator two, which is the blue uh, dashed line. So you see that this information is being uh, is entering the system, maybe with some delay, and as a result, uh, the motion both masters will move also master 2 uh, and the, as we have seen the overall displacement is uh, better realized than with uh, only one master and no communication uh, here we see uh, some uh, live demos in which uh, there is only one operator acting, so only the left button which corresponds to uh, operator 1 is doing, uh, trying to do his task of moving up the rigid pipe. And on the left side you see no augmentation, on the right side you see uh, uh, the presence of haptic augmentation. And you can tell, uh, now these are short videos which I run repeatedly, so let's see first the no augmentation case and trying to understand what happens. On the left hand side you will see the plots of the previous quantities, so the motion and the exchanged forces uh, along the z-axis and along the y-axis uh, generated online while the user is doing this live demo. So let's start with no augmentation first. You see that it's pushing up, again pushing up, you see that the motion is mostly of the first lathe, almost no motion of the second lathe, although some motion due to the pulling through the pipe uh, is uh, realized. Now if you look also at the other situation, you see that now, just pushing, ju just with the intention of the first operator, the second is automatically re uh, responding to this feed-forward information and moving forward in the same way. And you see that there's more motion for, uh, larger motion of slave 2 because of this, and also you see the exchange of information uh, on the z-axis about forces. Finally, this is uh, only with haptic augmentation. Now there will be uh, uh, commands from both operators, namely the two bottoms of this joystick. And this information, as I said, is transferred also to the other uh, master. This is a, an upward motion, upward motion commanded mainly by the second one, downward motion, slightly different, in parallel. Now trying to bring them together, but of course this is constrained motion which is not realized, and these forces are being felt by vibration in the, in the joystick. So this information is present there. So this is a, a, a preliminary experiment uh, with a device in the loop, not with the real manipulator. Uh, at DLR they are pursuing this activity for doing a remote uh, teleoperation of uh, cooperative uh, or be manual uh, robotic system in space. So this concludes uh, this uh, topic. We have seen the Geomagic Touch device in its uh, anatomy software use and application, and we have concluded uh, in many of these application um, teleoperation has been uh, used. So teleoperation control scheme have been used. And uh, I'm concluding now this uh, 
lecture by mentioning a couple of bibliographic entry, more general one, and with the blue dots are five uh, projects either performed in uh, uh, this module or for medical robotics or for medical robotics and robotics too, in fact, in the last uh, four or five years. So, thank you for listening.